they have different levels of spiritual life among us all. Not all of us are on the same level. There are some of us who have made greater stride in developing a spiritual life. Some of us are beginning. Some of us are struggling. But all of us, in some ways, we are perfecting ourselves. None of us must ever think that we have attained a certain height of holiness and so become contented and give a pat on our shoulder, on our back and say, well done, you are a great Catholic. And I think it's very dangerous if we ever arrive at that. If you are not happy in life, it's simply because you don't renounce your sin. If you still want to hold on to your grudges against people, then don't ask God, why am I not happy? Why am I so sad? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't let go, God can't do anything. God cannot give happiness if you still want to hold grudges. If you want to hold anger in your heart, the Holy Spirit cannot enter into you. It is your choice, actually. So if you want to continue to persist in living a life of sin, then your conscience will be always undisturbed, unsettled. If you cannot forgive, then your enemies will always come back to haunt you and you will never find peace. If you steal, if you cheat, then the past will continue to haunt you. And so you're asking, how come I have no peace? It is your choice. It's so simple as that. To let go or to continue in our sins. So this is a decision that we need to take. And so it's good to ask yourself, what is preventing you from being happy actually? Have you sat down to consider what is it that is making you unhappy in this life? What is bothering you? All of us have more or less the same things you know in life. Some are very happy, some are not happy. It cannot be because some of us have more things because there are some people who have much more things than us, they are even unhappy. There must be something about our attitude. A poor person can be very happy. A rich person can be very sad. So ask yourself, what is it that is holding you back from happiness? What is it that you need to let go, in other words, to be happy? You need to sit through and think through. Anger is one of the main reasons huh, why we cannot be happy. That's why if you have no anger in your heart, you are generally quite a happy person. Because anger is one of the things that keeps you awake at night. This kind of uh, situation, and the Lord wants us, huh, will lead us to eventually kill ourselves. Because from anger, it leads to calling names, and ultimately, it leads to violence. One thing after another. So, uh, this invitation to choose life, so to speak, is ours. It's your choice. You have the capacity. It's whether you want or you don't want. But lest you think that the call to conversion, the call to holiness, is just for those who are sinners, then you are wrong. Don't think that just because you're upright, your life is very saved. A complacency is always the work of the devil. The devil wants us to be complacent. Take it easy. So, complacency will eventually lead us to greater sin than a wicked man, actually. Because if a man is wicked, easier to convert. Very easy to convert wicked people, you know. Uh, because they know they are wicked. It's the good people who are wicked and they don't know they are wicked. That is the biggest problem. How to convert these people? And so these are the people that actually requires conversion. And we need to be alert, we need to be attentive. There's always a danger of complacency, a danger of self-righteousness, and we tend to take our spiritual life to, for granted. It's just like the Israelites. Just because they were the chosen people of God, they thought it was guaranteed. Just because they had done some good works, they are safe. Actually, the good works you have done means done finished over already. Oh, because you already have got your reward. What Jesus says, if you have done good, 
You are happy? That's your reward? What else you want? And then you have done all the good. You cannot say, oh, Jesus, you know, my past 30 years, huh, I have done so much. I serve in the church, altar server, all these things. Now the last 30 years, I live like a great sinner. Can you ask the marriage before you? It doesn't work that way. Because at any point of life, huh, the stage where you are is actually the accumulation of all that you are at any point in your life. So if you are always a selfish, wicked person, it grows. Or you repent, it becomes lesser. At any point of your life, huh, that is where you have arrived. So today, if you feel that you are more liberated, more forgiving, means that step by step, you have actually made progress. Let us make progress, step by step. Not for me to judge you, not for you to judge me, but each one will have to make their own progress, step by step, gradually. How do you measure whether you have made progress? Whether you are ready to be reconciled with your brothers and sisters, come to terms with the situation, come to terms with those who have hurt you. You cannot change them, what do you do? Then we just accept and just bear with it. No point getting angry. But this is where the Lord is asking of us. A sign that you are really in the kingdom of God. Because what is the kingdom of God? Kingdom of God is love, joy and peace. And when you make peace with your brothers and sisters, and even if they are not at peace with you, at least you are at peace with them, then you know that you are closer to the kingdom of God.